After the Second World War, Germany's economic miracle had many manifestations. The Volkswagen Beetle symbolized mobility for the masses. Meanwhile, many small companies used the tough little Tempo Matador to pick up supplies and distribute goods. Delivery personnel swore by the little all-purpose vehicle. Test driver Christoph Bauer says a different image comes to mind when he hears the word Matador, agile, graceful, and glamorous, with plenty of shiny chrome trim. The four-wheeled Matador is nothing like that. It's a hardy, honest workhorse. This Matador is the world's best restored and most authentic. It rolled off the assembly line of Hamburg's Tempo plant in 1951. Thereafter, it shifted scrap and hay. Businessman Oscar Videl began building three-wheel delivery trucks in 1928. In 1950, a more robust four-wheeled version, the Matador, was first produced. It has a four-cylinder, 25-horsepower boxer engine built in behind the front axle. Christoph Bauer says when he hears the motor under the seat, he knows exactly what the Matador is all about. He says, it's a VW Boxer, up until 1952, that is, when the Matador began to compete with the VW Type 2, more commonly known as a VW van. That's when engines and the Matador never sounded as good again. Bauer goes on to say that the Matador is a real looker, and if he's interpreting the looks correctly, the car is a real favorite with the ladies. And the Matador wasn't only a heartbreaker. With independent wheel suspension and front wheel drive, it was also a trendsetter for most of today's small trucks. Bauer describes the vehicle as an easy-going little truck, saying that you get plenty of sympathy points on the street, particularly from dog owners. Maybe because the unkind, say the Tempo's front, looks like the squashed-in nose of a boxer. It looks a bit sad, he says. The engine isn't what's behind the short snout, but the fuel tank, so you really don't want to get into an accident with it. Bauer tells us the 25-horsepower engine is behind the front axle and that the little truck chugs along, but when you're distributing beer, maybe time isn't exactly of the essence. He notes that the paint is new after painstaking restoration in California, where it's perfectly suited for use as a surface buggy, but since the truck was designed for work, it's time to get back on the job. While on a worldwide quest for original parts, the American Restorer stumbled across a complete load of old beer bottles and original wooden crates from a Bavarian brewery. He quickly resurrected the Matador as an authentic beer delivery truck. The Tempo can also be seen at the Zeithaus Museum at the Autostadt in Wolfsburg. Bauer says the car makers follow the if you don't have it, it can't break rule. The Matador has no extras, nothing. That isn't absolutely necessary. He tells us the vehicle was used to move goods from point A to point B, whether it was coal or scrap. And the Matador worked but with a top speed of around 65 kilometers per hour. It wasn't fast. After VW stopped supplying boxer engines, it was the end of the road for Tempo as a make of vehicle. Even the two-stroke engines from Elo and four-stroke motors from Heinkel and Austin couldn't stop the slide. Matadors stopped coming off the line in 1955 after a five-year production run that turned out 13,521 vehicles. Our test driver says that when you look at the design with front-wheel drive, lightweight construction and individual suspension of all four wheels, it can be said that the Hamburg company was already meeting the expectations consumers have for small commercial vehicles today. He says that viewed in that way, the Matador was a real milestone in automotive history and a very pleasant one. 
Tempo's Matador is part of the German economic miracle, but not with a happy ending. Nevertheless, the fame and reputation of genuine Matador lives on forever.